Task Force 76 is the amphibious force for 7th Fleet, and as you know, 7th Fleet uh, is how we uh, project power here uh, in the Western Pacific. Uh, and when you look at what the country's maritime strategy is, uh, being forward deployed in an area that counts uh, is vitally important. So we are the expeditionary uh, warfare bastion, if you will, for the 7th Fleet. We are the only expeditionary strike group uh, that is forward deployed 24-7. We're the only uh, flag-led uh, strike group uh, that is deployed as part of that blue-green team. And that's really important, especially as we look at the Marine Corps coming back to its naval roots uh, and back onto our ships. So we achieve it, frankly, uh, by that forward deployed uh, status. Some folks have said uh, that virtual presence is absolute absence. So uh, you have to be where it counts, when it counts, and that's where our ships and units are. As we look at for Task Force 76, what I've told uh, my commanders, their task is, it is to be uh, ready uh, for war fighting. And as we look at that, I break that down into three pillars. One is combat readiness, one is material readiness, and then one is personal readiness. And all three of those are very, very important. Uh, but as you look at the flagship Bonham Richard uh, behind me, uh, and as you look at how we project power, which is with uh, Marines that we will put ashore wherever they are needed, uh, whenever they're needed, and sometimes that will be for a contingency operation, sometimes that will be humanitarian assistance or disaster response, or that could be major uh, combat operations. Warfighting readiness is paramount. And it's pretty simple. Combat readiness is, do we know how to fight and defend uh, our ships, our aircraft, our Marines, as we are getting them to the fight? Material readiness is, are our engineering plants, are our operating systems uh, ready to go? And there's a lot uh, that goes into that. And then personal readiness is uh, whether or not our sailors and Marines and their families are armed uh, to be ready for the fight when and where that comes. And that ranges uh, everything from do we have the right uh, support at great bases uh, like Sasebo, like Okinawa where the headquarters staff is, Pohang uh, where we have a detachment uh, of our mine countermeasures uh, helicopters. Do we have the right infrastructure uh, to support them? Do we give them the right training and education uh, do we have the right inspections and certifications to make sure they're ready? Uh, and oh, by the way, do they have a work-life balance uh, so that they're not exhausted when we get them to the fight? And those are hard things to achieve, but it's something that we focus on. As I look at my uh, commanders and as I look at where we're going, uh, the first is uh, they have the accountability and the responsibility for their ships uh, and that's not something that, that I'm going to get in their knickers uh, and do for them. Uh, we have got to be ready, as I've mentioned, uh, for whatever contingency, operation, uh, or fight uh, comes our way. And so their ships, their squadrons, uh, their units, and, and as you look at what units we have, you see Bonham Richard, the flagship behind me, Germantown right now is underway. Uh, and is doing operations off of Guam. Uh, shortly she'll be doing more exercises as part of our CARAT uh, series. Uh, we just had one of our mine uh, countermeasure ships, the Patriot, who was off of Incheon, Korea, uh, for the commemoration of the landings there, uh, who has uh, returned and will have more MCMs uh, going to Korea uh, later uh, in the spring to do a major mine exercise there. Um, or whether it's what the Ashland did uh, in helping the, uh, the folks in Saipan um, with their recent uh, humanitarian assistance. All of those units were ready to answer uh, their call for tasking, and that's uh, simply what I expect of the commanding officers. Are they ready to answer the tasking uh, when it comes? But the other thing that we have to do is be ready as we look toward the future. 
Uh, this is one of the most important regions in the world. When you look at the Western Pacific, it's no mistake that we are here. It's no mistake that the United States is increasing the balance towards the Pacific. Uh, and, and this volatility means that it's even more important that our combat readiness uh, is, is always up uh, to the task. So there is a lot of responsibility that I put on those commanding officers. Um, and by the same token, I owe them the right oversight and support to make sure that we keep them and their sailors uh, ready to go whenever they're called for. My favorite part about coming to Sasebo is the sailors. Uh, it does not matter where I go, the best part of the U.S. Navy are the sailors that make everything happen. They are our most important warfighting asset and the families that support them. So quite frankly, when I get to Sasebo, and I, I uh, have one headquarters, uh, but two locations in Sasebo and in Okinawa, and I spend about the same amount of time in both locations, uh, and we're deployed about 50% uh, of the time on board Bonham Richard, but regardless of whether I'm here in Sasebo or in Okinawa or on one of our ships or with our squadrons, um, and I would just mention that, that uh, our uh, HSC-25, our uh, helicopter sea combat uh, squadron in Guam does great work there, but, but it's really seeing the sailors, talking to them, seeing how they're doing, seeing how their families are doing, that's my favorite part of the job. I'd like to add a thank you uh, to the many uh, people and organizations that support uh, what the U.S. Navy and specifically uh, what our Task Force 76 uh, sailors uh, are doing in making sure that we are ready uh, to do our mission. Whether it's our friends and families who sacrifice a lot, uh, whether it is the wonderful uh, men and women uh, of organizations uh, like CFAS here that run the base, that run the gym, that run the galley, okay, that have the MWR facilities, uh, and I can tell you they're top notch. Um, it is really, really important um, that we recognize what they have done and are doing for us because we couldn't do the mission without them. As we look at this month being Ombudsman Appreciation Month, as we look at the Navy Ball, uh, coming up here uh, in Sasebo, uh, I am really looking forward to the opportunity to personally say thank you uh, to many of those folks. But let me just tell you, if we didn't have all of them behind the scenes making things happen, then you would not see ships like the Bonhomme Richard behind me getting underway to answer our nation's tasking. Uh, so on behalf of the Navy, our nation, and as commander of Task Force 76, let me just say thank you.